Welcome. Another episode of Trap Talk. Matt Johnson here with Lonnie Murphy, head rod builder at Thorn Brothers Custom Rod Attack in Mary Boy, Minnesota. Today is going to be a fun episode. We're out here chasing finicky bluegills. Like Lonnie says, when the going gets tough, what do you do? And one thing I want to show you today is a new rod from Thorn Brothers that, again, is revolutionizing the ice fishing industry. It is called the Tripwire. It is basically, if I can get, well, sorry folks, they got to catch a fish when the fish is on. And there's a nice bluegill right there that came in on that tripwire. Tripwire, like I said, finicky bluegills is what we're targeting today. And what we're using here, that tripwire from Thorn Brothers, uses our ultra-sensitive solid graphite carbon blanks with thin titanium spring barber on the tip. We'll show some close-ups throughout this episode. You can see exactly how it works. We'll get some words from the master himself, Lonnie Murphy, on how this rod was built and how it was designed. And we'll show you some fish and give you some excellent insight on catching finicky bluegills. I'm going to show you something new to the ice market. We've been designing a new rod. Well, I should say Lonnie designed a new rod that's going to revolutionize spring bobber fishing uh, called the Trip Wire. Remember that name? It's going to be pretty prevalent in the ice fishing community now. So the Trip Wire, Lonnie, let's talk about this new rod. Well, what we did, Matt, we actually came out with uh, with a titanium wire that's first one I know of anyway. Um, and the great thing about titanium is that it's always going to spring back to the exact same position it was in. We won't have to worry about kinking up our spring. Uh, it's always going to be as sensitive as anything out there. Um, and with the trip wire rod, we've actually paired that up with the, the exact same blank that we use on our finesse rods and our sweet thing blanks. It's a perfect pan fish blank. Uh, we make a total length, including the trip wire of 26 on here. Uh, also another nice thing for those of you that, that are interested in having a nice outdoor spring like the trip wire, we can add that to any existing rod that you've already got. Uh, you're looking at about a $15 charge to do something like that. But uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a great great technique. It's great for when it's cold outside. You can't rely on cold hands to detect your strikes for you. Where you watch that trip wire, it's going to tell you when the fish is there. Like Lonnie said, uh, you know, we've had spring bobbers out in the past. It's no secret. And I think those of you who have used them can attest that the big problem we've had is very cold conditions outside like you see now. They want to freeze up. Our old spring bobber, excellent inside. This gives you that option to whole hop and fish outside with word, without worrying about something freezing up. And like Lonnie said, titanium we put this thing through the test, we've bent it, we've tried to kink it, we've tried all sorts of things, tape it to the rod flat, put it in the freezer, untape it the next day, it bounces back. So it's designed to bounce back, it's not going to kink. Very durable, very effective, and very excellent at detecting the lightest bites. So now you have a complete system here for a hole hopping outside to detect the bites, no matter the situation. Like Lonnie said, it's not built on a carbon fiber graphite blank, the most sensitive on the market, we don't skimp on component. Fuji guys, like Lonnie said, top-notch cork. You're getting the best of the best here in a spring bobber system. So let's zoom in on this rod, take a look, show you exactly what this trip wire does to give you a better idea, and then we'll catch some fish for you too. So as you can see, the trip wire is, is actually formed right to the blank here. Um, we're not adding any extra weight, no extra guides, grommets, anything such as that. It's, it's as light of a spring that we're going to find anywhere and it's as sensitive as any spring you're going to find anywhere. It'll show you if a fish is nearly breathing on this thing. Very, very minimal contact. All we've got is the line contact with that actual recoil guide on the end of this titanium spring. And uh, it does not ice up like a lot of the other ones on the market. It's going to show you the bites all the same. It's just a much lighter, much better system. Well, we know we've got some fish down there, Matt. Let's see what the trip wire does. Watching that jig work right down to the fish. I'm actually going to work it up. Attempt to draw one of the fish up and watch that wire for the bite. There he is. Okay. Nice little bluegill. Just like that, you can see how effective that trip wire was at telling us that fish was there. Today, I have to be honest, it's not extremely cold out here, but there are days I'm fishing. It's it's everything you can do to sit outdoors, but uh, when you're catching fish all the time, it's a lot more acceptable to do so. And the trip wire is actually showing all your bites for you. You're not having to feel anything. You am going to let him go and try to catch some of his bigger brothers. You simply watch for that bite, Matt. Another nice little bluegill. The effectiveness of a spring on the outside rods is 
unbelievable. Um, we don't have to actually feel that bite. We're, we're just watching that spring. It'll tell you exactly when to set the hook and if that fish is there. Way more sensitive than anything we can do as far as feeling the strikes by the, by the actual rod. Highly effective system. Well, well I've used this, uh, as you know, on and off. Well, I should say more on than off the last uh, month or so since ice has been on the lakes. And uh, as you probably are aware, I bring a lot of gear with me on the ice, several rods. And <laughs> this is the only one that gets used most of the days out here now because it, it, it does exactly what you want it to do. I mean, what better than an excellent strike indicating system balanced with a phenomenal rod for ultimate sensitivity, comfort, and play of the fish. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. It's no secret in the industry that Thorn Brothers has made uh, the best ice fishing rod. We use the best components. And now we uh, rival everyone with, uh, here's a nice one, with um, you know, the spring bobber system, that tripwire option on the top now that gives you the uh, bite strike indicator. So I should say this, uh, I've been pretty fortunate to use this rod this year <laughs> and get a chance to catch some fish with it because it's uh, opened my eyes. Uh, to fishing. I've always been a spring bobber guy, but like Lonnie says, uh, some of them freeze up. Uh, this one does nothing of the sort. I was out here with the little cold weather we have had this year, and I haven't had an issue with this freezing up at all. So, like Lonnie said, that they wrap a recoil spring gun in the very end of that tripwire, and it's a pretty large diameter. It's probably going to be one of the largest guides you're going to have There's one on, on the rods that you're using, so uh, very nice. Another, another hefty bluegill. And it's just one of those things to where I think the fish like the trip wire too. Yeah, it seems like they do, Matt. <laughs> they must know. As you can see, we're on a pretty good pot of fish here, Matt, but uh, they're not all that willing to come up here and, and just nail the bait. We are having to work them. And for these light biters, the trip wire is just great at detecting bites. Better than you're ever going to do with just trying to feel them with your hand. And if any rods can do that, it's going to be our Thorn Brothers rods. But uh, there are times when it's just it's just too cold to make it happen. Well, like Lonnie says, those guys that are out hole hopping, which seems to be the norm nowadays, the run and gun philosophy of ice fishing. Uh, like Lonnie says, cold days sensitivity for feel within your hand might not be an option. So having that a visual appeal to see a bite uh, can play a huge role in catching more fish and being successful on the ice. So, and like you see today, I mean, some of these fish, like Lonnie says, he's not kidding. Uh, they're very, very finicky. They bite very, very soft. Even though we got a pot of fish beneath us that seem eager to bite, um, as you know, finicky bluegills, when they get to be a better size, uh, they're definitely not going to come up and just slam the bait. They're going to come up and just mouth it. And without a spring bobber system like this trip wire, uh, you just don't see some of those bites. So, again, you know, you want to catch more fish, these sorts of tools need to be added to your arsenal. And, Matt, there are times, those of you that have sight fished some, We'll know what I'm talking about. Bluegills will come up and actually take a take a jig without you ever knowing, unless you're watching or you're watching a spring. And uh, trip wire is as sensitive as any at showing that that fish has got the bait in the mouth. It's time to set the hook. Well, Matt, I still have my go-to rods. The quiver stick is probably my favorite rod of all time. But uh, I have to admit, there's times where where either my hands are too cold to feel while I'm outside or uh, the fish just gets so finicky that I've got to downsize my baits and really downsize lines to get some bites. And uh, when you do that, you actually have to come up with a way when your hands are too cold to be able to detect your bite. And the trip wire is just great at that, Matt. You're basically, you're going to follow that bouncing ball out there. When you see that good, sharp wrap, you've got the fish down there. Like Lonnie said, the bouncing ball is he actually added a bead. Just like our custom rods, each trip, trip wire is built by hand by this gentleman next to me. He gets a kiss on the way out and gets attached to a rod. So there's a lot of detail involved. You know, it's not just a piece of titanium wrapped at the end. He actually wraps a recoil spring guide on the end to give you the utmost sensitivity control and reduce the amount of freeze up. So, you know, he took some time involved in this. I know you've been thinking about this one for a couple years and he's got it right. It's actually can... been about three years, man. Yeah. We've been uh, we've been toying around. We've had five or six prototypes out there. Finally got it all dialed in and it's going to be available this year for the first time. Yep. By the time you watch this video, you can probably order one. So how do you get a hold of one of these trip wires? What I would do is either call the store, we'll get them online on the website, thornbros.com, T-H-O-R-N-E. 
BROS.com is the website. Otherwise, call the store, 763-572-3782. Send us an email, info at thornbros.com. Any one of those three ways will get you to where you need to get to get your hands on one of these trip wires. Lonnie, what kind of price are we looking at for one of these? You're going to look at uh, 70 bucks for for the standard issue trip wire rod. It comes equipped with the uh, Fuji Alkanite outside guides and, of course, the trip wire that will be wrapped on with that last tip-top guide. And, uh, of course, you can upgrade. You can put recoils throughout like Matt's rod's got there. We'll keep the whole system a little bit lighter. In all honesty, uh, you know, I I would say the Alkanites are good enough for most guys. Um, for the ultimate, you will go with the recoils. I can tell you one thing, Matt, when we got to this lake today, a couple guys were getting off the ice, said they were marking fish, not getting bit. I think uh, they might have had a couple of these rods they might have known they were actually getting bites and not detecting. Yeah, it's always, uh, I don't want to say discouraging, but when you get to a body of water, and like Lonnie says, the first group of guys you see, some of which you know who are good fishermen, say it's tough, we're not catching much today, you know, it's not much going on. As you've seen, we've caught 25 fish in a matter of 10 minutes. And uh, again, like Lonnie said, tools like this tripwire allow you to see that sort of bite and, and catch some of these finicky fish. Well, and we would have undoubtedly felt some of these bites, Matt, but uh, there's been a lot of them that are, that are just barely even moving this spring. As sensitive as it is, it will tell you exactly when to set the hook and that that fish is there and committed. One right there. Some of the tackle options with this tripwire, maybe to get a little more detail as far as what it handles. Uh, I played around with some of the Fisca, the tungsten stuff, and it will work with the tungsten. Uh, once you get to some of the heavier tungsten, let's say the 6 millimeter type stuff, it starts to get a little heavy, but most of the stuff, 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, 4, I even use some 5 millimeter jigs. You know, that's basically size 16 up to, say, a size, you know, 8 hook, you know, are going to work with them. So, you know, you are talking uh, more finesse applications with the tripwire. So it's not going to be something you're going to say, drop down a number two or number three jig and wrap and rip away. I mean, that's not what you're going for with this setup. You're going for a more finesse approach. I happen to have a number 12 uh, blood red gill getter from North and Tackle here on my jig, uh, on my line that's working pretty well with the tripwire. Couple that with two or three pound test line, and it seems to balance out very, very well. So I've again, even gotten down to one pound too, Matt, and, uh, you know, down with the three millimeter tungsten jigs. Phenomenal setup light enough rod that you're not going to be breaking off even with that light line. You will have to have your drag set. Everybody knows that. And a uh, lot to be said about a good quality reel. They don't get a lot better than that one. Right. Yeah, balanced on this rod. I'm using um, a Shimano uh, Stratic CI4 Micro Line 1000. Uh, it's a magnesium reel. Very, very lightweight. Very comfortable. Uh, balance on this rod very well. All the 500 series Shimano reels are going to go work very well too. So there's options out there. You want to balance it with something on the ultralight category. So, you know, going too big on a reel cannot balance any rod. So, I mean, on the ice fishing market, I think we're pretty spoiled. We've got a lot of options out there to balance pretty well with these ice rods. Um, with some spring bobbers, you always uh, fear the inability to effectively jig. Uh, something like this allows you to still jig pretty effectively and have control of your presentation so you're not at the mercy. There's one. You're not at the mercy of, uh, oh, this one feels a little better. Nice fish. Nice about eight inch gill there, and uh, that's a nice gill anywhere, Matt. This one uh, smacked the trip wire. Came up and showed this one to the camera for you guys. Pretty healthy sunfish. And that's again testing it to the trip wire and detecting these sorts of bites to see exactly what these fish are doing. Again, that one ate that number 12 gill getter. Uh, uh, blood red here, that glow red, a pretty hot color. Glow red seems to be a pretty go-to of mine for most bodies of water for a variety of situations. Uh, seems to do pretty well for me. I'd like to say we're on a secluded uh, lake in the middle of nowhere, but no, we're in a metro area lake. You know, this lake gets relatively high pressure. So, I mean, we're not going to some farm pond in the middle of nowhere where no one's fished, uh, cheating you out of these fish. No, we're catching fish accessible to any one of you watching this. And I said, like I said, it's a metro area lake, you know, you know full bluegills, crappies, walleyes, everything. And you know, we're catching fish on a body of water that sees a fair amount of pressure. So, you know, that's one of those things to where you have some of these same fish. Like we just said, we have people that uh, 
as we're getting on the ice, we're saying they just left and caught literally nothing. And we're fishing some of the same spots they were fishing for most of the day, um, catching probably some of the same fish they were marking and weren't getting to bite. So, you know, it's kind of another testament to having the right tools to get the job done. Double. There you go. We are on a good pot of fish here, but uh, but it's it's pretty obvious that some of them are a little bit educated that we've caught 30 or 40 fish out of this school already. Um, and undoubtedly, a lot of them are just coming up and, and mouthing that jig, um, not really slamming it down, trip wires, you know, telegraphing every bite that we're getting, letting us know that they're down there. Here's the very typical looking bite with the trip wire. Um, best way to describe it, you're going to get a feel for, for how that jig is actually bouncing down there. Of course, the tip will bounce a little bit with the jig. What you're looking for is that sharp strike, and it, it telegraphs it so well because that spring is light, yet it's stiff enough we can bounce the jig with it, Matt. It's just the perfect combination. Still staying on the finesse aspect of things, I switch rods up. I'm now using the quiver stick from Thorn Brothers. It's got the recoil titanium spring guides, keeping things very lightweight. As you know, that blank's also built on the solid carbon fiber, that graphite option. The most sensitive ice blank, uh, arguably, definitely in the industry. Uh, very, very sensitive. It's different than the trip wire. It's not going to have that very quick titanium spring bobber tip. It's going to have more of a feel approach. So you have two different options. You have like a visual and you have feel. And this is going to be a feel option. The quiver stick is very, very sensitive. I'm going to drop the jigs down here and uh, see if I can't get a fit to eat on this. And uh, this rod I happen to have in my hands is, is a, a custom rod, a special custom rod, meaning that uh, I pick my favorite colors on the blank. Um, I have a different handle on there. A lot of things involved to make a rod custom. And as you know, at Thorn Brothers, we can customize just about anything to match your and make your needs happy. And this is a reverse locking handle. The handle actually uh, unwinds. It reels, the reel seat is fitted in there, so there's no taping of the cork. So you have all the cork on your handle. So the back end is going to actually come undone. Your reel seat fits nice and snug. You lock it back in. It's uh, definitely something that Thorn Brothers, I would say, uh, were the first to build. Others have uh, built something similar. But the Thermos kind of came out with that idea first and foremost. Very, very nice option, you know, to make something custom and make it yourself. Well, like I said, I have uh, um, yellow wraps with metallic blue. Those are the colors of uh, Matt Johnson Adores, my company. And I got them more customized. It says Matt Johnson on the rod. You, know, you can do a lot of things here. And uh, having those different colors and having your name printed on the rod, if you want that done, it's not an extra charge. Uh, you just have to wait the time to have a rod built. If you need a rod now, we do have a lot built on the shelf that are ready for you to pick up as you know when you walk into the store but uh, customizing something like this is something that you're gonna have to wait a little for but uh, waiting is a good thing sometimes you wait for good things and having rods like this built to very specialize your needs is, is good you know I've seen uh, wives come in or husbands come in and buy uh, rods for their wives they want them wrapped in pink they want them wrapped in purple I have guys come in and say hey, I'm a you know a Vikings fan I want uh, you know purple and gold we can do those sorts of things again and very very specialized to, to meet your needs and our quiver stick rod, as you know, like I said, one of the most sensitive options on the market as far as feel. And uh, I'm missing a lot of bites with it. I mean, these fish are biting so finicky that uh, it makes and breaks the day with that tripwire versus a rod like this. I mean, the quiver stick, like I said, is going to be the most sensitive uh, ice rod on the market feel-wise. And if I'm not feeling some of these bites with this quiver stick, I mean, that says a lot. And then I grab that tripwire and I, I almost instantly start catching fish again. So. I mean, again, another testament to having a nice spring bobber setup makes a world of difference. There's one on the quiver stick. That one popped it. Got off at the hole. No big deal. It's only about a two-pound bluegill, so you lose some of the big ones. Actually, it was a smaller one. But like I said, like I was saying, you know, even the most sensitive rods in the market, even when the bite turns finicky like this, you don't pick up some of these bites. Some of these fish are, you know, are so finicky that you don't even feel them. It's more of a visual thing. So having a spring bobber in your arsenal is definitely a must-have, a must-have if you're targeting finicky bluegills. Like I was saying, I was using that quiver stick for a while there, cut a couple fish, switching back to that trip wire because I just wasn't feeling or seeing as many bites as I have before. Drop the trip wire down here, fish hits it, oh, missed it, definitely saw that one hit though. Drop it back down, see if I can get another one to come up and come in. He ate it. Just like that, there's the difference right there with seeing that uh, quiver stick versus the trip wire, is that you see more on these finicky bites. Again, they're not biting hard, but they're biting 
you know, soft enough that you can't feel them on even the best quality component rod on the market. So, and you can see it, uh, you know, it's a finicky bite we got going on, and you can see we're now inside the fish trap. And uh, one of the things I want to note with finicky fish is, you know, oftentimes when bites get finicky, find a piece of structure, find a weed bed, find a chunk of wood, something that these fish can relate to. And um, I know we pre pre uh, preach a lot about running, gunning, hole hopping, but there's nothing wrong with sitting over a pot of fish if you have fish there. I mean, if you sit and fish them for 10, 15 minutes and you're not getting any bites, yeah, move on. But there's nothing wrong with sitting over a pot of fish, trying a few different things to see what they want. Because I can tell you, if you find what these fish want, you're probably going to catch more than just one. And keep moving. That's a very common mistake. I see a lot of ice fishermen doing on the lakes is uh, they'll go out there, punch three, four holes, and say, hey, they're not biting today. Uh, that's not the truth. Very rarely are there days that you won't find any fish that are active or active enough to play. Um, and you got to keep moving. Punch a lot of holes. It's not uncommon for me, Matt, when I go to a new lake in particular, I'll punch a hundred holes a day. And that's what it takes. Until you find the fish, keep moving. Auger gas is cheap. In the grand scheme of things, it actually is. Another important thing to note, I know I've talked about it before and even done episodes on doing your homework at home, but uh, don't be afraid to contact your local DNR. Look at bodies of water you want to target. Check with them and ask them what sort of fish are in those. Are there, are there big bluegills? You know, where you want to target some big sunfish. Going to a stunted sunfish lake trying to catch a trophy bluegill might not be the best plan of attack. You might shoot yourself down before you even start fishing. So do some research, do some homework, find out if there's even some of these quality fish in the bodies of water that you're targeting. Uh, that way you take away a lot of the guesswork and not as much frustration come the time to fish. And let's, be, let's be honest, we don't, we don't want to get the fish as much as we want. So the time on the water is very precious, the time on the ice I should say. So taking away as much guesswork as you can so that when it comes time to fish, you're doing just that, fishing and not trying to locate fish. Well, I think that's a good way to end the day. We got two, uh, two doubles. Or another double here. We've had several doubles throughout the day. You know, these bluegills, we've been dealing with finicky fish, like we said. Uh, we showed you that new tripwire from Thorn Brothers. Something new on the market that's going to hit uh, the industry by storm. We showed you some jig options. Talked about line, reel setup. You know, talked about the ability to not only run and gun, but to stay over a spot if the situation calls for it. Do your homework, check some spots out. Uh, targeting finicky bluegills doesn't have to be a pain process. It can be a rewarding and successful process. Just practice some of these tools. Go out there, have some fun. If you have any questions, you can contact us. Lonnie loves dice fish, as you know. Like I said, he fishes a lot of the major circuits. If you happen to be at Thorn Brothers, stop up, say hi to Lonnie, talk to him. He doesn't just build rods. He's got some very valuable insight on how to catch these fish. As you've seen, he's caught quite a few today. But uh, Lonnie, thanks so much for uh, joining us today on Trap Talk. Thank I you, appreciate Matt. it. Let me just catch this fish <laughs> as he catches another one right there. But uh, finicky bluegills, guys, get out there. We got some ice now. We're now into January. Again, we're still kind of uh, wishy-washy on excellent ice conditions in the metro. But for those of you in the outskirt metro area, northern Minnesota, you got good ice. A lot of people across the ice boat are starting to catch fish. Get out there and have some fun. So uh, for Matt Johnson and Lonnie Murphy here at Trap Talk, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again next week.